Just before we get started, I do want to mention another channel that I host called Mega Projects. It's all about mankind's greatest construction feats. Check it out through the link in the description below. More on that in a bit. The chain of production that brings food to our tables involves so many moving parts that it's practically magic. From growing out of the grounds of being processed and packaged, there are so many steps and therefore so many things that can go wrong. That kind of willful ignorance means that so many items can end up in the items we eat. Some of them very harmful, but a lot of times weird things are used in our food that have some kind of benefit. They sound worse than they are, but usually there's a reason for their existence. In the video today, we're looking at some odd secret ingredients in popular food. Number 10. Viruses in lunch meat. It's no secret that lunch meats are packed full of sodium and fat. It's a trade-off that we make so we can have delicious sandwiches. Those preservatives also allow that meat to stay good for a long time. But what if we told you that many of those deli meats are being sprayed with live viruses? That seemingly horrifying additive is actually intended to protect us. The Food and Drug Administration has allowed a mixture of six viruses to be sprayed on some lunch meats to protect against Listeria monocytogenes, which is a particularly nasty bacteria that can occur in those foods and causes many cases of food poisoning and even death every year. The good news is that the additive is only harmful to that kind of bacteria and only attacks those kind of cells. Meaning you can still eat fistfuls of that salami, knowing that viruses are protecting you and indeed already naturally inhabit your digestive tract. Number 9. Worcestershire sauce is made with anchovies. Worcestershire sauce is a unique sauce that many people use to enhance the flavor of beef, pork, or chicken. It is an unmistakable salty earthenness that is the end product of a mixture of some very unorthodox ingredients. Among them are molasses, vinegar, and corn syrup, some things you might not necessarily imagine putting on your sauce steak. But one of the ingredients that you probably wouldn't think to put in a liquidy steak sauce is anchovies. Yes, those tiny little fish that are often put on pizza are kept in wooden casts, topped with vinegar, and left to ferment for a year and a half. During that time, inosinate, a chemical that releases a savory flavor, is released. That singular umami flavor is what makes the sauce so unique, even if it is ground up fermented fish. Number 8. So many foods have sawdust in them. Have you ever wondered just how your shredded cheese keep from turning into a stuck-together mess? You could, of course, shred your own cheese at home, but it's never as free-flowing as the bag cheddar is at the supermarket. And the answer lies in trees. That's right, the anti-caking agents found in so many foods are derived from cellulose, which is a kind of plant fiber. One of the main sources of plant fiber is ground-up wood pulp. Cellulose is also present in many other items, like bottled condiment sauces and fast food restaurant sandwiches. It would be one thing if it added nutrition, but cellulose passes right through our bodies without being absorbed. Scientists say that we could produce this plant fiber from almost anything other than trees, but that it would cost us too much and waste too much good food. So, well, enjoy your sawdust. Number 7. Red velvet cake mix and many other red foods are made with ground-up beetles. If you've ever tried to make a solid red cake icing or red cake mix, you know that you usually just end up with something pink. It's very hard to get that solid red coloring when attempting to make red food, but thankfully science got ahead of the problem a long time ago. But what they didn't tell you is one of the best ways to get that color is to crush up some bugs. Cochineal dye is the technical term for it, but that ingredient is a byproduct of bugs that are dried up and crushed. Lord only knows how they figured out this particular usage, but when that dried up powder meets water, it makes a red pigment unlike any other. Red velvet cake, sausages, and even candy can contain cochineal dye. The little beetles feast off a certain type of cactus in American deserts and produce the dye in their stomachs to keep predators away. And of course, you have the gifts of the fruits of their labors in your own stomach. Number 6. Lots of canned foods have BPA in them. BPA, or bisphenol A, was a chemical present in many baby products up until recent years. BPA is a building block in the creation of many plastics and linings. It was also linked to cancer and other kinds of birth defects, so it's not surprising the FDA eventually removed it from those kinds of items. Except they didn't totally do away with it. Many food can linings still have BPA.
EPA in them. The Center for Environmental Health brought canned food from all sorts of locations in 2017, including supermarkets and dollar stores, and found that 40% of them still contained the harmful chemical. The rate was lower than a previous study done two years before, but it's shocking that almost half of canned goods contain such a dangerous substance. The FDA says the amount present in foods is safe, but other states like California are disagreeing and passing their own standards. And just before we get into the top five today, I do want to take a moment to tell you about another channel that I do called Mega Projects. Mega Projects is a channel all about mankind's greatest achievements, where I take a deep look at incredible buildings, projects, structures, and more. Whether it's the world's most impressive skyscrapers, the International Space Station, or Chernobyl's sarcophagus, I cover it all. New videos come out a couple of times a week on Mega Projects, so if you think it could be for you, please do head over and subscribe. There is a link in the description below. And let's get back to it. Number 5. Wendy's Chili Has Sand In It Of the main fast food chains, Wendy's is the only one to offer chili. And it's a pretty serviceable chili, but while you're topping off your baked potato, you should know that there might be sand in it. Silicon dioxide is a substance that's used in anti-caking applications and is present in several fast food items. Also known as silica, the substance keeps things like your chili from clumping together into a congealed mess. But it's also used to make cement and glass, though it's a different grade of silica. All in all, it's not much different from the sand on the beach. Number 4. Gelatin is made with bones Think of all the squishy, jiggly foods you have enjoyed in your life. Gummy bears, marshmallows, jello. All of those things have a texture and mouthfeel that's very distinctive. And the substance that makes those fun foods so much fun is gelatin. You may know that gelatin can come in powder form or sheets and is mostly tasteless and odorless in its pure form. But, well, what's it made out of? Well, the answer to that would be bones. Just think about that the next time you take a bite of some strawberry jello or a green gummy bear. You're eating a byproduct of cartilage, skin, and bones of animals like pigs and cows. It sounds grosser than it really is, but it's actually showing respect by eating the entire animal after getting all the meat off. And it's actually pretty healthy, containing 18 amino acids. Number 3. Coal tar used in sweeteners Saccharin is a sweetener that has had a troubled history. In Invented in 1879, it was used to sweeten food and drink, but by 1911, it was already earning a bad reputation. An attempt to ban it failed, and then the First and Second World Wars saw saccharin use saw during the sugar rations of each conflict. Another attempt to ban saccharin came in 1977, but that too failed. You might be surprised to know the origins of saccharin, and it came out of pure dumb happenstance. A Johns Hopkins researcher named Constantine Falberg was working on finding different uses for coal tar of all things. Coal tar is a super thick liquid that's left over after coal production. Falberg got some on his hands and thought the best idea was to taste it. It was exponentially sweeter than sugar, and his discovery led to the creation of saccharin. Falberg soon opened factories to make more of the sweet stuff, but was almost immediately met with skepticism over the safety of it. Good thing he had the White House as an ally in the form of then President Theodore. Or Roosevelt. Number 2. Many beers have dried fish bladder in them. Beer isn't known for being a particularly complicated beverage. There are lots of variations on the recipe, but the overwhelming majority of beers consist of hops, yeast, water, and grains. It's a process that's worked for hundreds, if not thousands, of years, and no matter what kind of craft beers add unique ingredients to shake things up, the big four main ingredients are always there. Well, sometimes there's also dead fish bladders as well. Yes, it's true, and it's also a little controversial, as many people think beer is vegetarian. It's called isinglass formally, and it's a kind of gelatin derived from the swim bladder of a fish. It's been used in many beers to filter out impurities and to make your beer brighter looking and less hazy. The substance also helps with overall taste, some say, and helps breweries get an attractive looking beer out to market in a shorter time. The days of isinglass being used might be numbered, however, as no one will ever really get over the thought of a fish bladder in their brew. Number 1. Processed breads have a substance made from human hair. One staple of the grocery store that surely isn't tampered with must be the loaf of bread, right? It's something you can count on, a simple sliced rectangle of goodness. Flour, yeast, water, it doesn't get much more simple than that, and from dough to the finished product, these baked goods don't have any room for any funny business, right? There's an amino acid chain in many of them called L-cysteine, and it's derived from human hair. Gross? Yes, L-cysteine is in these breads to prolong shelf life, which is crucial. It would just be great if there was a way to make it from something other than people's hair that's mostly gathered from beauty salon floors in China. L-cysteine can also be extracted from duck feathers and cow horns. 
These items are dissolved in acid, and once the amino acid is isolated, it's sent off to bread makers who then use it when baking their loaves. One way to avoid this is purchasing your bread from a local bakery who mostly use standard bare bones ingredients that don't have follicle juice in them. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below and don't forget to subscribe. Brand new videos just like this every day of the week. For more from me, subscribe to their Mega Projects channel that I mentioned. There's a link below. And thanks for watching.